Let's start off with a simple select query like this one that shows all fields from the grant table. We get four fields and ten records. Now we can change our field select list to select any fields we want. We can go grant name and amount. And we get just those two fields. We still get ten records. Now let's change this so we just get the emp ID. We still get 10 records, even though one of them is null. Now, let's look at these records. We have employee 7, employee 2, employee 7, null. Now, what if we wanted to see each individual value, how many different values there are? In other words, we should see 7 only once, 2 only once, 10 only once. So every value that appears one or more times, we want to see it once. Well, there's two ways to do that. We can go distinct and then emp ID and we see null 2, 3, 4, 5 and notice 7 appears only once or we have another alternative we can go group by emp ID and again we get every value once Let's take this group by query and turn it back into a normal query for just a second. And notice we get all 10 results from our table. And let's pull in another field, amount, and run both of those. Now we see that even though employee 7 appears several times, they have a different value each time. What is employee 7's total? Whatever, 4750 plus 18,100 plus 25,000 is. Now here's a great usefulness for the group by. If we still wanted to see only employee once, we would group by the emp ID. And what do we want to see for the amount next to them? Which one should it choose? Well, perhaps we should aggregate them with a sum. What is the total for each employee's amount? Run this query. Employee 7 has $47,850. The total for each employee is listed right next to the employee ID. The employee ID is listed only once because we grouped on that, and then the numeric amount was aggregated with a function. Let's change this just a little bit. Let's say we wanted to figure out how many grants each employee found, not the total. Well, we would just change our aggregated function to count instead of sum. And we can see employee 7 has found three grants. Now, what if I wanted to find the largest grant that every employee has found? You change your aggregated function to find the maximum amount in that grouping. And the highest grant that employee 7 has found is $25,000. All of our queries throughout this book have set a great precedence of making sure that every field in the result set is named. Now this summarized query, where I'm getting the grant grand totals next to the name, appears to have no column name, so we can easily just alias this as total amount and run it. And then we get the field name. Let's do a group by query with a join. Let's start off with select star from employee as EMP and then inner join location as loc and we'll join them on location ID equals location dot location ID and run it. We get 12 records instead of all 13 employees because John Marshbank has a null location ID. Now let's change this to a full outer join and run it. Now I get a total of 14 records. Okay, let's itemize our field list to just show city, 
and first name and run it. There's the city and Alex, Seattle, Barry, Boston, Lee, and so forth. Now, let's group by the city because we're interested in seeing the total of how many employees work in each city. So let's go group by city. Now we're aggregating on city. Are we trying to sum, count, find the maximum? What are we trying to do for the first name? We are trying to count all of the first names in that city. Notice in the city of Null, there's one person. And in Boston, we have three. In Chicago, we have none. In Seattle, we have seven. And in Spokane, we have two. When it comes to using count, we actually have a couple of choices. Now, before showing you those choices, let's turn this back into a normal non-aggregated query by just selecting the two fields and run this query. Now, let's look at all of our results if we can. Seattle is listed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Each time, there's a name next to it. Spokane is listed twice. Now, notice Chicago is listed once. So there is one record of Chicago. It just doesn't have anybody in it. So if I were to count the first names, Chicago, even though it appears once in this query, would be aggregated to zero. Let's see that again. Count, first name, and now we're going to group by city and run it. Chicago has no values in first name that it could count. Now, if I were to change this to a count asterisk, it is no longer counting the values. It's counting the number of times Chicago appeared as a record in that last result set. And Chicago now has a 1 next to it. So there's a difference between counting records and counting values. If you're counting values, you specifically name the field. If you're just counting the records, then you put an asterisk inside of the function. Okay, got another trick to show you before turning you loose, and that's this. Let's do a join between the employee table as imp and join it to the grant table as gr. And of course, those two join on the employee ID, which is equal to the grant employee ID. And we see the list of all the employees and the grants that they found. Let's take a quick look here. It looks like David Lawning found another one. David Kenson has found one. So we have three grants found by David Lawning and one grant found by David Kenson. Now, if we were to do a group by first name and put first name up here, followed by a count of the grant name, we get four. It shows David has found four. What it did is it grouped the three records from David Lawning and the one record from Dave Kenson. So in this situation, we might want to do a multiple level grouping. So let me go first name, comma, last name, and put last name up here as well, which gets us to another rule. All of the fields listed in the group by clause should also be listed in the select clause. Any field in your select list that is not mentioned in the group by must use an aggregated function. Now let's test these results. Now we see Dave Kenson has one, David Lawning has three. Time for lab 4.1, skill check one. Query the employee table of JProco to see how many people work for each manager ID. Select the manager ID and count the employee ID fields. Alias the field as imp ID count. When you're done, your screen should resemble the figure you see here. Gil check do. 
perform a grouping query of the customer table to get a count of how many consumer versus business customers you have, alias the aggregated field as customer count. Group on the customer type field. When you're done, your results should resemble the figure you see here. Skill check three. Get a list of all customers and how many invoice orders each customer has placed. You will need to join the customer and sales invoice tables, alias the aggregated field as invoice ID count. If a customer has not yet ordered, then you should still see their name with a zero next to it. Hint, this will require an outer join between customer and sales invoice. When you're done, your screen should resemble the figure you see here. Skill check four. Make a slight modification to skill check three so that only customers who have placed at least one order appear in the query. You'll have to change your type of join. Notice customer five who ordered nothing does not appear in this result. When you're done, your query should resemble the figure you see here. And that does Lab 4.1 using Group By. Next item is Lab 4.2 on filtering aggregated data.